Hey there everyone, what's going on? It is The Disconnected here again with my Scream Factory collection. No reason to delay any longer, we're going to jump right into part 3 of my collection. Hopefully you've watched part 1 and 2. Today we are likely going to finish up the standard releases, go into the 3 Sacred Bones releases that have come out, and then maybe dive into our Slip Cover Collector's Editions. Before we get too deep into it, I don't generally ask for this, but if you could, give it a like and subscribe. And if you know somebody that might like this, please share with your friends. I am trying to grow a little community out there so that we can all learn about some of these boutique Blu-rays together. And if somebody else likes Scream Factory, this is the place to be. Thank you. Okay, so in our last video, we left off with the Scanners 2 and 3 double feature, so we are going to be heading forward from there. First, we have the Scream Factory release of Scarecrows, then Scars of Dracula, Peter Weller in Screamers, Scream for Help, Screaming Skull, this one is one of the repackaged double features of The Fog and The Howling. This is The Seduction with Morgan Fairchild. Here's a classic, The Sentinel. This is Session 9. I, uh, I don't really love that movie. I know a lot of people are huge on it, but it was not that great for me. The Seventh Sign with Demi Moore. Shark and Saw Woman's Prison Massacre. Shelley, Bridget Fonda and Jennifer Jason Lee in Single White Female, the original release of the Slumber Party Massacre, the double feature, Slumber Party Massacre 2 and Slumber Party Massacre 3, warning on this one, this is one that frequently gets bootlegged out of Brazil and sold for huge amounts of money on eBay. The way to tell that this is not a bootleg is when you open this up, the back of the disc should be silver and shiny like a regular disc rather than black which is what happens with a burn disc you can see those are silver and shiny that's how you tell if yours is legit the next one is john carpenter's someone's watching me david carradine in sunny boy the Soul Collector, Species 2, and of course that leads into the double feature of Species 3 and Species The Awakening. Love the art on this one, The Spell, recently released Sphinx, and The Spider. All right, we are down to the final three compartments of the standard releases. This one is The Squad. This one is the terrible to Google Then the newly out of print Stigmata. Surprisingly great movie. Straight On Till Morning. The absolute classic straight jacket with Joan Crawford. That one is from William Castle, of course. Then we have Strays, Streetwalking, which was one of the uh, Scream Factory site exclusives that was limited to a thousand copies. Super Beast, Supernova with James Spader and Angela Bassett. Superstition, some classic artwork there. A lot of people probably recognize from old video stores. And Swamp Thing. Course. Uh, just so everybody knows, this is technically not the uncut version. Uh, I believe 88 Films put that out in the UK, but here there is a small scene with nudity that was cut. Then we got the original Tales from the Crypt and the Vault of Horror double feature. Then IFC release Tank 432. And to go with Spider, this is Tarantula. And then Roman Polanski's The Tenant. Another double feature, Tentacles and Reptilicus. Then, of course, the released Terror in the Isles. 
Uh, for somebody that does not know, this is essentially a, a clip show compilation of a whole bunch of movies. It is a roller coaster ride through the most terrifying moments from over 70 of Hollywood's greatest chillers. Very interesting full length movie. Then we have a double feature of Terror Vision and The Video Dead. This is one of the better double features that Scream Factory put out. Then the recently released site exclusive The Terror Within and The Terror Within 2. This was limited to a thousand copies as well. This Island Earth. Then we have Time Bomb. Then the last one on the shelf is the ultra rare Time Walker. This is one that you cannot find anymore because this was another site exclusive limited to a thousand copies. It is only available in the secondhand market and it goes for stupid amounts of money nowadays. Okay, frequent viewers on this channel know that Vincent Price is one of my favorite. Here he is in William Castle's The Tingler. Then we have To the Devil, A Daughter. This is one of the best releases from Scream Factory, in my opinion. This is The Town That Dreaded Sundown. I've actually bought this one a couple of times. And uh, there is a special bonus feature release on here, uh, on the DVD only, of The Evictors. Another movie that they put out on Blu-ray on uh, one of their standard releases that I showed you earlier. Okay, this is Troll and Troll 2, the double feature. And the even more rare first version of Troll and Troll 2, double feature, that also included Best Worst Movie, the documentary on DVD. Okay, this was a site exclusive recently released. This is Twice Dead. Only a thousand of those were released. Then we have The Unborn, another site exclusive up from the depths. This one only had a thousand copies released as well. And this one also is starting to shoot up pretty high on the second hand market. Then we have the sequel Urban Legends Final Cut, Bill Paxton in The Vagrant, The Vampire, The Vampire and the Ballerina, the Vampire Lovers, a double feature of Vampire's Kiss and High Spirits. And then this one is another side exclusive that is pretty expensive nowadays. That is the Velvet Vampire. Only a thousand of those were released. The Vengeance of She, Vicious Lips, Jamie Lee Curtis in Virus. Warning Sign with Sam Watterson. War of the Colossal Beast. Classic The Wasp Woman. And Welcome to Mercy. All right, we are down to the final shelf of the standard releases. First we have Welcome to Willits. Another IFC Midnight release, What Keeps You Alive. What's the Matter with Helen? What We Become, the sequel, When a Stranger Calls Back, White of the Eye, Willard, and the remake with Crispin Glover of Willard, Windows, The Witches with Joan Fontaine, love this artwork, that is Without Warning, Witchboard, Women's Prison Massacre, another double feature of X-Ray and Schizoid, X the Unknown, You'll Like My Mother, and finally, Zombie High. That is all of the standard releases that have been released by Scream Factory. Now we're going to go over the three Sacred Bones releases. So for Sacred Bones releases, the first one we have is Big Trouble in Little China. And it is this nice square box. It's got the Scream Factory logo on the side there. Nothing on the back except for the Sacred Bones logo. And when you open it up, this is what was inside. And the movie was housed right there. But the important part is that we have this little 7-inch record. 
That shows you what is on there. A couple of tracks composed by John Carpenter. And taking it out. This is what the record itself looks like. Nice bright green. The next one they did is Prince of Darkness. There's the title and the Scream Factory logo. Okay, this is the one that came with the 4K release of Prince of Darkness right there. There is the 7 inch sleeve, and on the back side you have the key art and the song information composed and performed by John Carpenter and the actual 7 inch inside looks like this clear vinyl with the blood red splatter and the final release that they've worked together is they live of course there is the title and scream factory on the spine this one, like Prince of Darkness, came with the 4K release housed inside. This is the art on the sleeve for They Live. Flipping it over, we have the Obey glasses, the two tracks composed and performed by John Carpenter, and the 7 inch. Looks like this bubblegum pink vinyl record. Just as a bonus, this is not Scream Factory, but I store those Sacred Bones releases on the shelf next to this Year of the Villain, The Joker, signed by John Carpenter, and it's a 9.8 grade. My wife actually bought this for me for Christmas last year. It makes for a nice shelf piece, and John Carpenter is getting more and more rare signing things, so it's always nice to have. All right, that was the last of the standard releases and the Sacred Bones releases. Now we are going to get into the slipcover releases. Now most of these are going to be collector's edition releases from Scream Factory. Some of them, like you see here, are the IFC Midnight releases that get slipcovers. No rhyme or reason why they, those do and others do not, but let's get into it. On many of these slipcover releases, these are some of my literal favorite movies of all time, so I might go into a little more depth on some of these. And that means we will likely not finish all of these today, but I think it's a good place to start. So first we have 10 to Midnight with Charles Bronson. Great art on that one. 68 Kill. Alien Outpost. Ambition. By the way, I do have every single slipcover they've released, so if you think you might be missing one, just pay attention here and you'll know. Animal. April Fool's Day. This is a classic. Um, first off, I will say I love this new art from Scream Factory. I understand the hate on this movie. The end of the movie, if you've seen it, uh, you'll understand that some people believe that it takes away from the emotional impact of the movie. However, I think at the time it was very clever. Um, since then there are a couple movies that have come out that have mimicked that same type of ending. And uh, it's taken away the gravity of it, I get it, but still a great one to watch. This is the original collector's edition of Army of Darkness. This is, as you can see, a very stacked release. This is a three disc full feature release from Scream Factory. Army of Frankensteins. Assault on Precinct 13 from John Carpenter. This is one that's getting a uh, new 4K restoration from another company right now. No guarantee that that will be coming to disc, but they are working on it. The Autopsy of Jane Doe. Watch this one recently with my wife. This is a great movie. Uh, very creepy, very nice setting, being in a morgue. I suggest giving that one a watch. Now this is one where being a collector kind of can drive you crazy. I did want every single slip. You can see I do have three here for the Babadook. The first one that they put out is just the standard slip cover. And then the movie got a little more popular. So they released a collector's edition of the Babadook from IFC Midnight still with a pop-up 
slipcover. If it's in a word or it's in a book, you can't get rid of the Babadook. Now, a lot of people, a lot of people hate this movie. I understand the child in it is extremely annoying. I, for one, love this movie. This movie speaks to me very well as a parent of a child with special needs. And if you watch it with a different lens, you might understand that uh, it is a really well-made movie. And not every kid can be perfect all the time. Now this one is timely, as I'm filming this in June and it's Pride Month. This was released as a Pride Month release, and the only reason this exists is because the Babadook has somehow ended up being a, uh, a banner of pride because there was an incident on Netflix where it was for some reason labeled as a LGBT movie, and they just grabbed onto it. This is Baba Yaga, Terror of the Dark Forest. This is Back Country. Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon. This is a sort of slasher mockumentary, and Robert England's in this, and if you have not seen this one, this is, this is an underrated classic in my opinion. It's fairly new. Uh, I believe it was released in like 2006 or 7, somewhere around there. Uh, I see 2007 right there. And it was not really big at the time, and it's gotten a little more of a cult following since then, but this movie is great. I'd give it a watch. Larry Fessenden title, Beneath. My slipcover on this one is sort of beat up. Now this one, I have the Steelbook, Steelbook version, but this is the collector's edition of Big Trouble in Little China from John Carpenter. Most people have seen this one. If not, I'm sure you know that you absolutely should be watching it. This is Bite. This is one of the Scream Factory releases that got a slipcover that is not from IFC Midnight, and there's no real indication why it has a slipcover. And last on this shelf is one of my favorite movies of all time. This is the original Black Christmas. This is a movie that is especially looked at in a historical lens of the time. Extremely haunting, extremely well done. Uh, it was surprisingly woke for the time with discussions of abortion. Uh, this is the original poster art on the inside. And if you've never seen it, that should absolutely be remedied as soon as possible. One of my favorites, Black Christmas. All right, moving on to the next shelf, another one of my favorites. This movie has some of the pra best practical effects of all time. This is The Blob. This is a movie that features Shawnee Smith from Saw. You can see her up in the upper left corner there, super young. And then, of course, that is also Kevin Dillon next to her. And this is a great release. So glad it came out when it did. This is the original poster art of The Blob. This was originally released by Twilight Time and went out of print pretty much immediately. So I'm glad that Scream Factory was able to secure the rights for that. This is Blood Sucking Bastards. This is a release that has been very cheap from most retailers since about four days after it was released. John Carpenter's anthology film, Body Bags. This is a great one if you've never seen it. Uh, the Scream Factory release could have been a little bit better. Uh, there's some audio quirks on it that are a little odd. That's Mark Hamill on the left there and Stacy Keach in the middle. And surprisingly, that is John Carpenter as the mortician. Then with Rain Wilson from The Office, this is The Boy. Then the Brides of Dracula. Then we have Bubba Hotep with Bruce Campbell. And I gotta be honest, I really don't love this movie. Um, it has a big cult following. I, I adore Bruce Campbell. I think he's amazing and has done a lot for the genre. But uh, I, I do not love Bubba Hotep. It's pretty boring to me. Next we have The Burning. A lot of people have seen this movie. Very famous scene with the scissors on the right there. Then Camp Coldbrook from Joe Dante. Has Daniel Harris in it. All right, probably one of the best three horror movies of the 90s. We have Candyman with Tony Todd. Amazing, amazing release. This will probably not get a better release unless this gets a 4K UHD release. 
And even then, they're probably not going to do many more special features, although you never know with the new Candyman coming out. This is Carnage Park. Then we have the Collector's Edition of Carrie. And as you can see, they did go all out once they got more rights for this release. They did have that double feature with Carrie and Carrie 2, but that is the one to get if you can find it, as that is now out of print. Although I would not be surprised, obviously with a title as big as Carrie, if that were to get a 4K release eventually. This is Cat People. This one will probably not ever get a 4K release. Just not a big name. A uh, fairly recent release from IFC Midnight. This is Centigrade. Another collector's edition that is out of print. This is Child's Play. Fairly decent new artwork on this one. And then we have one that I picked up for rather cheap and the plastic is falling off of it because I've had it for a while. Class of 1984. I've seen Midnight release of the Clove Hitch Killer. A lot of people didn't know why this one was a Scream Factory release, but this is Stallone in Cobra. Then Cockneys vs. Zombies. One of the best witch movies of all time. This is The Craft. Uh, the four big names that you see across the top there have some of the best chemistry that you'll see, especially for a all-female ensemble movie and this is a wonderful release the movie looks great sounds great and is very very good still it very much still holds up then we have the cured with elliot page and for our next shelf the curse of the werewolf another one that's kind of an odd fit for scream factory jean-claude van damme in cyborg Dark Hall, Sam Raimi classic Dark Man, A Dark Song, a whole lot of dark movies together. This is Dark Summer. All right, remakes. This is Dawn of the Dead. This was directed by Zack Schneider. This is a great release. They have the theatrical and unrated version. And let me see the original poster art for the remake of Dawn of the Dead. This is one of the reasons why movies should be remade. This remake is great. It is something that delivers in every sense of the word. Um, I, I don't, you know... I don't feel the need to lambast things because they are a remake. Um, there are so many people that will dismiss things just by saying, well, the original Dawn of the Dead was so good, why does it need a remake? It doesn't necessarily re need a remake, but why not? It's been, you know, at that time it was, what, 30 years? No reason it can't be. Speaking of the original, this is Day of the Dead from George A. Romero. And uh, might be a controversial take for some, but I believe this is my favorite of his original trilogy. This is a movie that features a lot of talking and dialogue and a whole lot of absolutely genius practical effects by Tom Savini. And if you've never seen it or you have not given it the respect that it deserves, I would certainly suggest you take another look at it. This is Deadly Blessing. And then from David Cronenberg, we have Dead Ringers, a movie about twins. And we have The Dead Room, Dead Shadows, Dead Souls. Now we have uh, my first real big disappointing collector's edition from Scream Factory, and that is Death Becomes Her. This movie is pretty, pretty good. Uh, it, it's a fun watch at least once. Looks a little odd when I have the art flipped around here. This is the original poster art. Now, unfortunately, this was announced with a bunch of special features and it was pared down to only feature this little bit that you'll see here. And there is just not enough to warrant a, a collector's edition here, in my opinion. Uh, obviously, the three main stars of this movie are massive stars and they're going to be difficult to get, but it is just 
not real worth it, in my opinion. And we have Deep in the Darkness, Desolation, The Devil's Dolls, Devil's Gate. Another one that is sort of disappointing, and that is their release of Dog Soldiers. This scan that they used is very rough. This movie looks, uh, pardon the pun here, but kind of looks like dog shit. Uh, there is a 4K release that is forthcoming out of Europe. I would look for that when it comes out. It's supposed to be great. And then the last on this shelf is Dolls. This is one of my favorite Screen Factory releases. Unfortunately, it's out of print and extremely expensive nowadays. Uh, this is a Stuart Gordon movie that is amazing. Here is the very famous original poster art for Dolls. And this movie is so much fun. Uh, it has some great practical effects. It also has some really good work with stop motion. And it is a good, compelling story. And one that everybody should see at least once, in my opinion. All right, that is going to do it for today. Next time, I'm going to be starting on this shelf. And we will finish out all of the collector's edition slipcover releases. And then just as a tease, I also have all of the alternate slipcovers that Screen Factory has put out. So we're going to go over those as well. I'm sure some people were wondering about the alternate slips because titles like Candyman and Carrie and Child's Play have those alternate slips. So I will be happy to show those as well. So there are many people that have you know, no idea that they even exist. Check back next week for part four in my Screen Factory collection videos. That will be the last of them. And until then, I will say thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.